What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to take a brief look at SF Symbols 3, which was just announced, WWDC 2021. So here we are on developer.apple.com slash design, and then I clicked into SF Symbols. And they have a bit of a spiel here about, you know, what's included. Of course, we still have the same symbols that we know and love. But now there's a couple improvements and the biggest thing here is color, which I'll talk about in a moment, but just to go through them really fast before we jump into some code, we've got 600 new symbols here, which is always welcomed. Apple keeps adding symbols. We keep loving them. Sounds good to me. The next thing that they have here, which I think is the coolest thing is uh, enhanced color customization. So last year we got multicolor support and this year they're taking it a step further where we can not only hierarchically control the color so each of the symbols is split up into different layers we can also use a color palette a lot of the apps that we work on especially professionally usually companies have their own color palettes and it'd be nice to just apply them in one shot so you can do that now uh, moving along down, they have a lot of new improvements of the actual macOS SF Symbols app where you can, you know, not just see and browse the symbols, but you can actually configure them, their color, their, you know, boldness, all that good stuff and, you know, copy and paste them directly in. And then finally, they have much better support for custom symbols. A lot of the apps that we might work on, we might have custom symbols. So that all said, let's go ahead and jump into the SF Symbols three beta app i've got it right here actually and let's uh, take a look at this before we jump into xcode 13 beta and try to use some of it so this is what the app looks like fairly similar to what we already know with a couple of key differences obviously this right panel sticks out like a sore thumb before i even get there um, apple changed up some of the stuff at the top here so one big change that they made was before we used to have uh, icons with the suffix of something like dot fill or you know dot uh, outline or th things basically suffix of the name of the symbol that would basically describe an icon and then some styling on it right so instead of doing that what they've done is you can actually now um, just to use the symbol name and not have to worry about like the boldness or things of that nature dot fill or whatever you can actually customize that through an actual property so maybe we want lasso here or let me try to find one that's a good match uh, there's way too many here actually for me to look right now but um, that's the first big takeaway the other takeaway which is kind of cool is if I go ahead and like select one of these so this one here circle pencil circle fill on the right hand side, if I go to this little info disclosure, you can see this is available in monochrome, hierarchical, palette, and multicolor. So the two new things here are hierarchical and palette. So what the heck are these? So first of all, it shows you availability, iOS 15, Mac OS 12, and all the new uh, basically uh, OSs. But what these represent is hierarchical allows you to color all of the different layers in this icon uh, hierarchically, as the name implies. And palette allows you to color uh, the icon based on a color palette. So I haven't actually been able to get palette working, but I'll show you guys in the code how to work with it. And of course, there's 600 new symbols in here. Um, I'm going to comb through it and maybe figure out what the cool new ones are. A lot more multicolor support. You might also be noticing that all of this is orange. So the reason it's showing up like that is because you can actually change rendering in here directly in the SF Symbols app. And you can change up all of these guys as well. I don't remember if we had this before, but now we also have things like palette. So my current Mac OS, uh, you know, tint color is blue, which is why everything changed to blue here. We've got a primary color as well as like these accent colors. So you can actually customize them right in line and you can see things change um, on the left hand side. So what's pretty cool about this is you can actually customize it here to bring in the icon directly. And it's really cool to visualize like what the three colors are going to be actually mapped to in your uh, final icon and because Apple offers this customization you can get pretty uh, unique with your how these symbols look so of course the symbols will look the same but look how different these all look compared to before just because we added you know the uh, palette here for color uh, and then selected our three colors similar for hierarchical you can of course always tweak this guy up as well which is your primary color and then you can also do this background here 
Uh, I guess that just applies to the background of the entire uh, image because default is uh, just like this clear color. And yeah, I mean, that's SF Symbols 3 uh, Mac OS app in a nutshell. They also have this customized uh, icon space here where you can bring in custom icons as the name implies. I haven't ever actually done this. Maybe I'll go ahead and pick up some Photoshop uh, icons and just bring them in here. Maybe do a video on that. At the top here, you can also switch between SF Pro, Compact, etc., etc. So that all said, let's actually go over to Xcode. So this is Xcode 13 Beta, which is what you need, which bundles the new iOS and Mac OS uh, OS releases, the betas. So we're going to go ahead and create a brand new app here. Things are going to look a little different as I go through this, so just stick with me. I'm going to be doing a Xcode 13 uh, video as well, but we're going to want to stick with the app under iOS still. I'm going to go ahead and call this SF Symbols 3 Preview. Go ahead and continue. You want to make sure your app, uh, in this case, I'm actually, I've am actually i actually picked a Swift UI here. You can go with UI Kit as well. All of, the, all of this stuff is available in UI Kit and App Kit, but since Swift UI is pretty easy to demo this stuff with, we'll stick with that. And let's go ahead and create this here. And let's uh, I'll hope that Xcode 13 beta doesn't crash on me. So I'm going to go ahead and change the preview device up here. It's uh, moved a little bit from the prior Xcode release. We'll go with the 12 Pro Max. And I'll hit that resume button and pray that it actually decides to load. So while that's doing its thing, let me go ahead and expand our Xcode window here. And uh, on the left, you'll notice the icons have changed a little bit. The one thing that we want to change in our application's general settings here is the minimum iOS version we're targeting. A lot of this stuff is available only in iOS 15 and up, so we are going to bump that deployment target to iOS 15 and up, and then we'll jump back to our content view, and surprisingly, our uh, preview has loaded very quickly, so a little bit of a shocker. So let's go ahead and do some of these SF symbol uh, uh, things. So let's go ahead in here, I'm just gonna start with a navigation view, pop in a vertical stack here, Maybe I'll give this a title so we look like we made an effort. That's not how you spell title. Let's go ahead and make this a navigation title and I'll call this SF Symbols 3. And let's go ahead and grab a symbol. So here is the uh, SF Symbols app. Let's look for something that's maybe uh, a palette color. So, okay, here's our palette colors that we have specified. Let me actually change this so it looks a little different. So here we go, this one is an orange circle with a purplish uh, arrow thing. So let's see what happens if I just do Command C. If I come in here, I can just actually paste it and we get the actual um, image copied, which is not what we want. But if I do Command Shift C, let's see uh, what we end up getting. So let's take a look in here. The availability looks to be hierarchical and we want iOS 15. So we're gonna bring in a image with a system name, and for those of you who hear the banging in the background of my video, I have some work being done, so just ignore that. I don't know if you guys can actually hear it, but um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what this looks like. So there's the image. I'm gonna bring in resizable, and before I actually bring in the rendering modes, let's just go ahead and set a width and a height on here. So we'll go width 100, and I'm also gonna go a height 100. And we start to see our image, so looking pretty cool. Right now it comes in as monochrome and it won't let me zoom in. Ah, there we go. Um, and this is not what we want, obviously, so how do we change this? So we can go ahead and say, so there, if you start typing in rendering mode, you'll notice there's a general rendering mode here which has template available in it. But what we actually wanna to start to use as of iOS 15 is this symbol rendering mode. And one is for a image and one is for a view. I think the compiler will honestly figure out what the correct one is since the signature is identical. So we can just grab on this one and I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the dot and we'll see the new ones in here. So uh, that would be hierarchical and palette. So if I go ahead and just click on hierarchical, you can notice right away the circle presumably is the lower layer, hence it has turned to this light gray and the arrow is the higher up layer, so it has changed as well. Now, if I go ahead and make this palette, you'll notice that everything looks the same, and I presume it looks the same because we don't actually have a palette set at the moment. We have this accent color here in our uh, uh, assets, which I guess we can go ahead and uh, change up here, so just bear with me while I change this here. So we have an appearance, a gamut, and then we have color. 
So let's go ahead and just change up this color here and let's see if that actually impacts how our uh, image rendering works. So this accent color is just available by default in your applications. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, let's make sure that this is set to palette. We can go ahead and hit resume here. I haven't gotten palette to work, so fingers crossed. Let's see if it actually works. If not, maybe I'm missing a particular modifier here, but it is available to you, you know, Let's hit resume one more time. Xcode's doing something funky here. And uh, there is actually the other thing I'll call out here. There is an accent color modifier. And I've tried to play with this as well to see if this is the one that we need, but it never ends up uh, actually updating, but it is available. And personally, the one that I really like is hierarchical. And if you actually look at the description here, it's a mode that renders symbols as multiple layers with different uh, different spe specities, opacities, can't read today, uh, applied to the foreground style. So this is the one I particularly prefer. Of course, multicolor is still here for all of you that love multicolor. You can um, change the actual tints color, but if you just go ahead and change this back to multicolor, if I can find it, there it is. And if you just look through here, a lot of these still show up a multicolor. So as I scroll through, of course, all the weather ones are multicolor, but there's some other ones that stick out too that are new. So, for example, uh, I don't know if this is new, but this exclamation mark is warning sign looking thing. If I go ahead and bring that in here, we get hopefully that image. Bear with me. Hopefully, should should show up. If not, then uh, we got Xcode doing some playing some tricks on us today. So let's see why that's not showing up. It's definitely a system name, resizable. Let's get rid of that. Let's go ahead and make this multicolor, which it is already. Ah, and there it is, okay. So it looks like that accent color was uh, not helping our case. But yeah, I mean, that's basically SF Symbols uh, 3 in a nutshell. Uh, I'd like to get to a point where I can figure out some of the different modifiers that are available. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video, but I at least wanted to share, you know, it's new, it's available, I think it's pretty great. Um, definitely incorporate SF symbols into your applications, especially now that we have three years of support on it, iOS 13, 14, and now upcoming 15. I used to make my own icons way back in the day. It used to be a hassle. It was such a pain to render them and then export them in a high resolution format. I super, super like how you can not only stylize these with color, but also the font size. So right now we just made a resizable with a frame, but if we wanted to go ahead and you know make it bold, uh, you might know this already, and this is not new by any means, but you can go ahead and give it a size and even a weight. So I can say size, and we want a weight, and maybe I want it to be bold, and we can actually go ahead and do that. So I think we actually need the argument here. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, also available to you, so definitely take advantage of it. So that's all i got for you guys today. Fairly short video. I know the code wasn't super complete because I myself am still toying my way through it. Uh, lots of new WWDC 2021 videos to come. Xcode 13 is pretty cool, pretty stable so far. Um, got a lot of new Swift UI stuff, a lot of new button stuff. So stay tuned for all that goodness. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and want to stick around. Comment your guys' thoughts. What are you guys most excited to see from iOS 15 from a developer perspective? And I'll definitely be making all those videos. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.